We've learned a lot about Joomla this weekend. Everything from the software to the future of Joomla. Last night we had an amazing panel on what has kind of made Joomla from some of our founders and leadership that has guided Joomla over the last decade. We're going to take one last look at Joomla. Uh, this, we're, I'm going to introduce here Kenneth Crowder. You probably saw him on the panel last night. He's been involved in Joomla since before Joomla was Joomla uh, in so many different ways. And he has a fascinating look at the history of Joomla that will hopefully help you learn a little bit more about where Joomla has come from and also where Joomla is going. And we should have a little bit of fun tonight as well. So let's give a warm welcome to Kenneth Crowder. All right, well, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me to come out to Bangalore to speak to all of you about this project. Uh, it's a great project, as you all know. And uh, for some of you, this information that I'll be discussing is brand new. Others of you uh, might know some of it. Uh, I believe only a couple of you would know most of it, if not all of it. And uh, I have a habit of talking fast. So does somebody, so um, if I start talking fast, somebody wave their hand. And am I talking too fast, Ryan? Yeah, slow down. That's exactly what I need from you, not Jacoby, because he'll just raise his hands for no reason. So um, let's continue on. So happy birthday, Joomla. As most of you know, uh, Joomla turned 10 this year. Some people think it's August 17th. Some people think it's September 1st. And the reason is, is August 17th is when the project was declared, and September 1st is when we had a name. And I even went out on the magazine and um, the community site, and I found people wishing Joomla happy birthday on both dates. So even within our community, there's kind of a, um, uh, an, an unknown there. But irregardless, we're 10 this year. So uh, I said Joomla is 10 years old, and so did everything else this weekend. But technically, that's not true. It's a half-truth. So there's a lot to discover over the next hour or so. And I've chosen to primarily focus on Joomla's origins. And that is how we came from Mambo over to Joomla. And uh, after that, I'll kind of speed through the more current events. Great. So before we jump into things, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'll keep it very, very brief. And um, there's no sales pitch included, so no problem there. Who am I? Uh, as John said, my name is Ken Crowder. Some of you on the forums might know me as Chief Gopur. Uh, that's a handle I've had since 97. I won't go into why. It's kind of a weird story. Um, I am from Omaha, Nebraska. I've lived there for about 10 years. I lived uh, in Missouri, which is another state in the US, uh, 25 years prior to that. I started using Mambo back in April 2005. Uh, this little brief history came out in the panel, so I'll kind of rush through it. Uh, that was just building a website for a hospital system. And in September of 2005, I started using Joomla, along with most people here that have been around for 10 years. In February 2006, I became a moderator. That was my first official involvement, uh, so not to correct John, um, but I wasn't actually involved in the project when it was Mambo. I was just a user like many of you. Uh, I shouldn't say just. I was a user like many of you. And then in May 2006, I became a global moderator, which I still am. I joined the leadership team in July 2009. Nine months later, I had to step down due to time commitment with switching jobs, and um, it was just best for uh, the CLT at the time. So I also co-authored a book uh, by O'Reilly called Using Joomla, first edition. I was asked to co-author the second edition, but didn't have time. Um, writing a book is fun the first time. Uh, it's very time consuming. And um, unless your name is Stephen King or Anne Rice or one of those people, uh, it's not something you really do for a large financial gain. I also did a set of security courses for lynda.com. But most importantly, uh, those of you that know me know that I am a family guy. Love my family. Uh, yeah, there they are. There's my kids. That's pictures about a year old. They're two, four, six, and eight years old now. Fun, fun stuff. So where were we? Enough about me. 
Joomla is not really 10 years old. As you all know, it's actually 15 years old because Joomla came from Mambo. So <clears throat> depending on where you're from, some people say Mambo. So who here says Mambo? Raise your hand. I say Mambo most of the time. Who here says Mambo? OK. Who thinks they're right? I have no idea. I think it's actually, I think it's actually Mambo, since it is Australian. Uh, that's where it started. Uh, in 2000, a company called Miro, I used to call it Miro, but it's pronounced Miro, they developed Mambo to be a uh, proprietary CMS that they would use, built their own CMS, to use on their clients' websites. Um, in, there we go. In 2001, uh, Miro changed the license to GPL to speed up development. They also called it Mambo Site Server. That's, and that was in 2001. In 2002, Mambo Site Server was renamed to Mambo Open Source, which is kind of important, not important, uh, but it's important in the fact that we get the MOS abbreviation. So who remembers the JOS underscore database prefix? Anybody in older versions? That is carried over from this MOS prefix that came from Mambo. Great, uh, Robert Castley uh, takes charge of the Mambo Open Source Project as project director, and um, along with a team of volunteers, they release Mambo 4.0, which is important because the 4.0 line, or version 4, is a line that eventually transitions into uh, Joomla. Great. So, uh, 4.5, jump to that. Uh, Andrew Eddy, he's one of our founders, uh, couldn't make it for the panel this year. But uh, he stepped in as project director whenever Castley stepped down. I dug into why he stepped down, and uh, from what I understand, it wasn't really political, it was just personal, ready to step down. And Mambo starts winning some awards, so they start really making a name for themselves. Uh, they won Best Free Software Project of the Year from Linux Format and Best Linux or Open Source Software from Linux User and Developer. And then finally, the Steering Committee was formed, which uh, there are many slides about the Steering Committee. So here's how it worked. There were five members. Two of them were from the production, the project development team, the first two names. Those are also Joomla founders. Some of you might recognize those names. The next two worked for Miro, and the fifth one was an independent legal counsel, although uh, the term independent is used loosely there as some people feel like they weren't as independent as they were supposed to be. So the purpose of the steering team committee was to um, drive the open source project, and um, it's, it's kind of like what, I don't want to say it's like what open source matters is for us, but it's similar. So it was supposed to be similar to what Open Source Matters does for Joomla, but as we'll see going on, um, it's nothing like Open Source Matters, but the intention was there. So um, Mambo Open Source just becomes Mambo. The steering team committee in April began discussing how to form this nonprofit, which Open Source Matters is a nonprofit, and the intent there was to remove Miro's uh, commercial interests. So Miro created Mambo. Uh, they decided to make a GPL. Once you do that, you can't go back. And so once it got popular, started winning awards, they wanted to pull that control back and then say, hey, we should put this in the code. We should put this in the code. Uh, but if the developers didn't want to, they didn't have to. It was open source. So um, what rights did Miro have? They own the copyright, and they own the trademark. So if they say, you can't use the Mambo name, they can say that. They own it. So there was kind of a conflict there. Um, I tried to find other things that happened in 2005 uh, without success. So nothing really important happened in 2005. But uh, yeah, I got married. That's important. So I should tell my wife that. So 
quote from Brian Tiemann. Uh, who here knows who Brian Tiemann is? Raise your hand. Oh, he's got a fan club. Awesome. So, a quote from him uh, I got about six months ago. Foundation documents were drawn up with a full agreement of the entire Mambo Steering Committee as a result of a two-day long meeting held at Myro's offices in Australia. As far as Andrew Eddy and myself were aware, it was these foundation documents drawn up by a highly respected intellectual property lawyer that were registered with the Victoria State in Australia. Um, so I like the line where he says, as far as Andrew Eddy and myself were aware. Um, so we'll get back to that in a minute. So 2005, in August, uh, Mambo wins an award, and they're going to accept it at the Linux World Conference in San Francisco. And Andrew uh, Miller, Andy Miller, there he is right there, Andy Miller. So Andy Miller was there, along with Mitch Pirtle. And uh, so pay attention, that's important. Had a discussion with Andy about this, and anyway. All right, so trust is broken. At this expo, Mambo had a booth. Let me ask you, Andy, do you call it Mambo or Mambo? Mambo, really? Sweet. I'm going to call it Mambo from now on. Thank you. Great. So they were represented by Mitch Pirtle and Andy Miller. Uh, and your memories of this are vague or crisp? Uh, your memories of this expo, are they clear or just kind of foggy? Foggy? OK. Well, I, I'm going to clear it up for you. This, this will be great for you. So uh, I spoke with Mitch at length about this over Skype or the phone. I forget which one. And uh, I actually hoped he would be here today so that I could just say, hey, Mitch, come up here and talk for five minutes, because it would be great to hear from him. And so he recalls that the booth that he and Andy were at was just off the escalator that everybody had to pass as they came into the conference hall. And um, uh, he was squatting behind the table, and they were reading the forum, which had just announced that the steering team committee was created, which was causing a bunch of um, chaos, turmoil. So the foundation was created, just not the way they'd all agreed to. So we had an agreement, but then that's not what happened. Something completely different is what happened. And to add to that, the CEO of Miro appointed himself as chairman of the committee. So it's kind of hard to remove the uh, commercial interests of Miro when you've got the CEO running the foundation that's going to govern over it. So it's kind of a complete opposite of what was intended by that foundation. So question mark. So this is where the roller coaster of emotions start. And uh, one person I spoke to who asked to remain anonymous Referred to, as Lamont, referred to Lamont as going full Napoleon. Um, not sure why he didn't want to be named, but I thought it was fun. So the documents that were drawn up in Australia were ignored. Uh, the CEO of Miro, Peter Lamont, re, uh, regains control of Mambo. And uh, clearly, clearly a power grab. I heard that from multiple people. That was quite interesting. So what options do you have? <clears throat> well, luckily, it is an open source project. It is GPL. So you, you do have options. But at the Linux World Expo with Andy and Mitch, um, Mitch recalls squatting behind, I'm guessing, a round table. I'm not sure if he said what shape it was. And he was reading aloud to Andy, which Andy recalls that part from previous discussions. And uh, so they were in disbelief. And they had about 10 minutes until people started coming in. So they had 10 minutes to regroup. But the doors were opened early. So they're kind of trying to figure out what's going on, what are we going to do. We've got this award to accept. And here comes a bunch of people. But fortunately, a man that Mitch knew named Eben Moglin was one of the first people up the, up the escalator. So I knew nothing about Eben Moglin. And uh, that's this picture there I'm using without permission. It's good. And uh, I watched a few YouTube videos of him speaking uh, to the European Union. If you ever get bored, it's actually a really good video that explains uh, why open source is important within government. But he assisted in drafting the GPL version 3, so he understands GPL very well. 
and he is the founder of the Software Freedom Law Center, which you can read what it is there. Um, so Mitch and Andy explain to Evan, this is what's going on, what do we do, can you help us? And so uh, Evan agrees to help under one condition. So according to Mitch, his instructions were simple, don't say a single word to anyone the whole weekend that includes the entire core team, and I'll see you back in my office in New York City. Either you're quiet or the deal's off. Um, when I first heard that, I thought of Brian Tiemann. He's not quiet about anything. So uh, kudos to him for keeping quiet. I actually recall wondering when the core team was gonna make a statement. And I'm like, why are they silent about this? What are they doing? They, they can't just take it. So uh, it's interesting now, many years later, to learn exactly why they were so quiet for so long. So Mitch showed up at Evan's office uh, in New York. I'm gonna guess on Monday. I don't know for sure, but as, uh, as requested. And if you look there, September 23rd, 2005, Open Source Matters officially becomes an organization, or at least that's when it was filed, which is actually after the Joomla project was announced, the name was decided upon, but it takes time. Uh, and speaking with some of the original core team members, three or four of them told me that they think the US was a bad decision to register open source matters. If there's other countries, it would have been better, but uh, at the time, um, it was just easy. It was easier, because uh, Evan was gonna help, Evan's in New York, Mitch was there. It's just easy as that. So, who remembers this post on the Mambo forums. Anybody? I remember it. Yeah, core team finally speaks out. And so uh, Andrew Eddy, who goes by Master Chief. Am I talking too fast? Ryan Ozimek. All, All right, anyone who English is not your first language, am I talking too fast? <laughs> You're, I know, okay. <clears throat> if I am, just wave your hand and I will slow down. So, August 17, 2005, Andrew Eddy posts this open letter on the Mambo forums, and he calls out the uh, Mambo Foundation uh, for this power grab concern. And while he wished them well, he did state that um, they have sought the legal counsel of the Software Freedom Law Center uh, for legal advice, and um, basically said we're out. So these are the original 19 core team members, which is pretty cool. If you look on the, uh, uh, some of the, the forums and history about it, it'll show 20, because Ray was listed twice. So if you ever hear someone say there's 20 core team members originally in Joomla, it's because apparently Ray is two people. So in this picture, which is slightly different than the one I saw earlier, but taken at the same time, um, my mouse, my mouse where? Who's that guy right there, Andy? Like a, and then here's Johan, he's also here. So uh, this was the first time that uh, most of them had ever met in person. And I heard someone tell me that it was the first time that three uh, core team members had ever been in the same country, which I'm not sure if that's accurate because we have three people in Australia at the time, but at least in the same place. So. 14 of the 19 actually got together for this photo. And that was uh, about a month after the project began. So I asked a bunch of people what their biggest fear was. Um, I'm not really a fan of reading slides, but um, I'm going to anyway. So uh, Andrew Eddy said, I think the threat of legal action lingered in our minds, which we later found out wasn't a problem. Shane Bartlett, also from Australia, said, short term, we thought we'd be laughed into oblivion, although it was quickly apparent that it was false, a false fear. Brad Baker, um, also from Australia, see there's three. The whole thing could easily have failed, most forks fail, which is true. Uh, Brian Tiemann, not so much fear, but a doubt, would the community and user base come with us? Uh, JM, one worry, 
uh, will I be able to get all the translation teams I had recruited for Mambo? For those of you that know JM, uh, he is the translation team, or historically has been. Uh, I'm sure he cares about the rest of the project, but that's always been his baby. Uh, Andy Stewart, uh, his biggest fear is that the community wouldn't understand what they were doing because the Mambo community was very strong. And it really was. I remember thinking, wow, Mambo, the community is very loyal. Are they going to jump ship? And in fact, um, where I worked at, we, we waited about a month to actually jump over to Joomla because we didn't want to convert everything to Joomla and then have to convert everything back if the fork failed. So I can totally understand Andy Stewart's point of view. Then Mitch, uh, my biggest fear was that we'd say, hey, everyone, we're rebranding. Come with us, and we'll do great things together and get greedy with crickets. Uh, is, is that a term in India? I assume it is. It means no one's coming. It's, anyway, good. So we have a project. Now we need a name. Names are very important. Seems like most open source projects have weird names, so uh, we, didn't, we didn't disappoint. So three names were looked at. Uh, actually, lots of names were looked at. Three finalists were chosen. We have Segris, which uh, Johan actually, is Johan here? OK. Um, he brought it up yesterday. Uh, I, I assume that means he liked that one. So Segris was a butterfly. If you notice the orange tips, that was kind of symbolic. Um, butterflies are growing into new things. Orange was the color of Mambo. Um, I, th I think it would have been an okay choice. Primary key, I found out yesterday that Andy Miller still owns primarykey.org, so that's, that's fun. You can use that for something. That was based around MySQL's primary key field. And then we have a third one called Joomla, and that's a Swahili word for all together or as a whole. I've also heard it used as total. Um, so JM found it in a um, Swahili dictionary, which is quite interesting. He told me he was sitting with someone, uh, and I don't have that written down, so he was working with, anyway. So um, people call him grandpa sometimes. I've got some JM stories, but this isn't really the uh, place to tell them. But uh, how do we choose? How do we choose? So the core team went back and forth. Um, I had one person tell me that uh, there was a lot of bickering, fighting, uh, arguments over this. Can you attest to that? You weren't the one that told me that. Okay. Yeah, lots of, lots of heated debates over what name do we do, how, what name do we choose, how do we choose it. And one of the core team members named Peter Russell, he came up with an idea. He had a friend named Darren Woolley who owns a brand consultancy company uh, that, I did some research on this company, 50 of the top 100 advertisers in the world use this company. And they, they help companies form their brand. So uh, the, the, I, the plan was, you know what, let's stop fighting about this. Let's send these three names off to him. His company will look at them. They'll have focus groups. They're, they're experts at this. He'll do it for free because he's a friend of mine. Let's just do that, and then whatever he comes back with, that's what we do, no questions asked. So, September 1st, 2005, the name was announced. I don't actually know when the name was chosen, because there has to be some time there to get domains. Uh, I do know that um, people who had Mambo domain names, they were given a one-day notice, is that correct? So, like, uh, like, yeah, like M Mambo Shack, you know, they were given a one-day notice to say, okay, go register Joomla Shack. Uh, that way, the project name isn't announced and someone goes and snipes a name that should belong to somebody else. There's just one problem with this name is that uh, for years, people have questioned uh, how the name was actually chosen. So I went into detective mode. And my wife was present when I called lots of people on Skype and emailed people and um, thought I was a little crazy at times, going into reporter mode, as she called it. And so I had a lengthy conversation with Peter Russell. 
He's the guy who sent the name off names off to this brand consultancy company. And I finally got him to admit something I'd never heard before. And first he says, okay, I'll tell you this, but you can't, you cannot put this in your presentation. So I listened to it and that was fine. Ended the call. A few days later I called him back and I said this, I really gotta add this to the presentation. I mean, this is, this is awesome. So he switched his off the record to uh, let her out and be done with it. Because it had been 10 years and I said, listen, people love the name. It's solid in the open source world. So the, uh, the short of it is Darren, who owned that company, had a guide. It was his cheat sheet, actually a cheat sheet, much bigger. It was a guide that he used to help all these companies throughout the world develop their brand. And he said, Here, yes, Peter, you can use this. Probably, just don't give it out, because these are our secrets. So Peter went through this guide and looked at the names and picked Joomla. So Darren nor his company ever actually saw the name, even though the core team was led to believe otherwise. And uh, when I asked him about the exclamation point, I got a quote here on my notes. He said it was for balance. So I think about it back then. Yahoo had the exclamation point. See, Y is big. You don't want the thing to tip over. Uh, I'm guessing the guide had something to do with your, your name can't fall over. So this picture, I don't have a date when it was taken, but I'm guessing it was taken uh, the week prior to Joomla being announced. Uh, searching Google for Joomla returned four hits. So that's quite interesting. If you look today, there are millions and millions and millions of hits. Next up, we've got a name. We need a logo. How many of you remember watching the logo before in? Anybody? I do. Awesome. It was, it was fun to look at them. I would, you know, I'd spend 15 minutes each day looking on the forums to, to see because that's where we had to post them. <coughs> I was going to submit one, but I'm not artistic at all, so I didn't. So the community was asked to submit logos. And I was going to um, grab some of the best ones and you know, put them on different slides and click through them. But then I found this video that Brian Tiemann made and he agreed to, uh, to let me use it, which has saved me a ton of time in doing this presentation. But at the end of this video, there's also, um, does anyone know of the Metro Mall in I guess Mumbai, yes? Has anyone ever been there about seven, eight years ago? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. well then you'll, you'll like this. Uh, let me just play this video, it's about four minutes long. If I can get my mouse to show up, there we are. Then, oh I don't want sound. One second. Sound is not important for this. This needs to be, it's actually on YouTube, but I'm cheating. I got the real file. That way I wouldn't have to deal with latency. So the history of the logo. This is actually every logo that was submitted in rapid fire. <coughs> As you see these, imagine these being on your website. Did anybody here submit a logo? I'm curious. Anybody? No? Did you submit one, Andy? Mm-hmm. Well, keep watching, maybe you'll see it, if you did. You'll notice at this time a font was chosen, because some people are using the font that we use.
few more of these. Yeah, on the bird logo, I tried to find out who had a uh, logo first, whether or not it was Twitter or that submission. I couldn't figure it out because they look very similar. So there's a the vote. And this is the uh, Metro Mall. This was our first incident of someone trying to um, steal our logo. I tried to contact this guy. If you guys know him, let him know that. Gotta love that, right? So whenever we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have since changed their logo. <laughs> um, I believe uh, we have a global uh, copyright trademark on that logo, is that accurate? Who here would know? Yeah. So that's, That is humorous. All right, so that's fun, right? Great. So voting begins. Um, I can say I did vote for the one that won. Sorry, say again. Yes, yes, he, yes, he was. He was. Yeah. So when it showed that forum post, um, as a moderator at the global moderator at the time saw that post, and I remember sitting that off to Elon Waring, who was our OSM president at the time, saying, uh, this looks like it's gonna be a problem. And um, yeah, so I'm guessing we had to spend some money and get lawyers involved and uh, get that fixed. So, but yes, he was the one, the gentleman in the picture is the one who did report it, saying, uh, sir, madam, I noticed this, maybe you should check it out. So. Uh, voting lasted five days. A winner was announced. Uh, yeah, winner was announced. And then here we see that Joomla01 won by 3%. And you all know John Neubauer. This was a comment. As I was making this slide, I was chatting with him online. And uh, I thought that was a, a pretty funny quote, so I used it with permission, of course, this time. So, go back a few days, September 17th, Joomla 1.0 was released. <coughs> um, so if you notice up there, there's no logo next to Powered by Joomla because we had announced, the logo had not been announced yet. This was part of uh, Andrew Eddy's, um, I think that was one of the first forum announcements, maybe, I don't know, announcement three or four essentially saying Joomla 1.0 is out. Uh, this is gonna make history, which it did. So essentially, Joomla 1.0 was Mambo 452 rebranded. I believe they fixed a few bugs, uh, but for the most part, it was renaming everything Mambo to Joomla, except the stuff that's required uh, by GPL to stay in there. Um, nothing forward facing on the site. There we go. There was no logo, hadn't been picked yet. 
the logo didn't make its first appearance until uh, Joomla 1.0.2. That's a fun fact that you all should remember knowing there's a pop quiz at the end. Great, so January 2008, Joomla 1.5 came out. This, in my opinion, was one of the biggest jumps we had in the CMS. Um, I think of Johan, uh, who was on the panel yesterday, and Louis Landry is the two. I think their proper term was lead developer, co-lead developer, something like that. Granted, they were on a team, but um, it was a major rewrite for the framework. End users, yeah, there were changes, but most of the changes, as Johan stated yesterday, were for developers. It did make, it did make things a lot easier to extend and use, and much better. This is the part where we kind of go faster. Um, the history is, in my opinion, the most important part. Uh, getting to today, uh, now that we're Joomla, and given the time, um, yeah, continuing on. Joomla 1.6 came out. So 1.6, it's kind of an odd name. Uh, I, I actually think Joomla 1.5 should have been called Joomla 2.0. Agree, disagree? Um, there was a, I won't say debate, there was discussion over it. I threw my opinion in the ring and said it should be 2.0. I forget who told me, but the decision was made because there was a legacy plugin which made it backwards compatible, which it was. So you could still use Joomla 1.0 extensions on your 1.5 site if you had the legacy plugin installed. So great, we can call it 1.5. When 1.6 came out, I didn't, I guess I don't agree with that, um, but nor do I really agree with the whole versioning structure we have now, but um, yeah, it's a different discussion. So access control was added. That was very important. That's something you had to do with a third party extension prior to this. Unlimited categories. I uh, saw a video where Andrew Eddy was saying, um, I don't know why we need unlimited categories, but if you want it, we'll put it in there. So uh, the admin improvements. 1.7, I actually really liked that version, um, mainly for the fact that it had the database prefix being random. If a hacker were to do uh, SQL injection and they were to use a certain query with the table name in there, they would know that your table name is Joss underscore users for the users table. Well, having a random database prefix, you get the luxury of hackers don't know your database prefix. So, I won't say it's a foolproof thing, but it's definitely an improvement. So 2.5, uh, there were, that, that was a good release. User notes, uh, I'm a big fan of user notes, and also the way we support multiple databases now, other than just MySQL. So who remembers Joomla 3.0 going responsive? Awesome. Uh, on that one, I think we relate to the game, but, uh, but, but, even, but even still, I think WordPress had it before us as far as responsive in their core. But nevertheless, September 2012, um, our core is responsive, which is important as we go forward uh, with mobile devices, different screen sizes. <clears throat> 3.2, I'm a little partial to. Uh, I had the privilege of being Ram Tripathi. That's him on the right. Uh, I was his mentor for Google Summer of Code in 2013. That is one smart kid. Uh, if I knew what he knew when I was his age, oh man, anyway. Um, so he rewrote the template manager, so now you can do overrides in the back end. So that was his Google Summer of Code project, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, also access to JED from the admin, as well as uh, version control, which is something that uh, people have wondered for years, and uh, I think it's great that I think it's great that it's in there. 3.3, uh, uh, Babker called it the most stable Joomla release ever. It was mostly a security release. Uh, 3.4 came out earlier this year. Uh, lots and lots of bug fixes, uh, more decoupling of built-in core components and composer integration. If you're not a developer, that really doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, so. Is that the end? No. No, it's not. So uh, yesterday, actually, two days ago or yesterday? 
I'm kind of confused on my days. Uh, 3.5 beta 1 came out. And so beta 2 comes out next week and um, release candidate. And then 3.5 stable is scheduled for December 8th, but things change. So who knows? But uh, please test it, submit your feedback. If you find any bugs in there, this is the time to get those fixed. And definitely don't use it on a production site. That would be very, very important. Great, so these are the 10 people that I bugged the most. So there were 19 uh, core team members, but I wasn't able to get a hold of all of them. Some of them are very hard to find, but uh, these are the ones that uh, I bugged over and over and over with questions for this presentation. I think now is the time for the quiz. Where's John? Quiz now? Or do you want the quiz after? Great. So who's heard of Kahoot? I found out about it yesterday. So I've got a quiz on here, and you have to get your phones out. You go to kahoot.it, I'll give you a code, and the questions will show up up here, and you get to pick from your phone um, which answer is, which answer you think is correct. So I'm probably going to need help. Where's Jerry? Jerry. Can I quit real quick? Because I don't wanna I don't wanna screw this up. I have been told that the winner of this, which what if somebody gets all the questions right? That's an issue. So the winner gets a free ticket to next year's conference. But what if someone gets all what if two people get all eight questions right? Names in a hat? Sure, okay. You know what, we'll, we'll, we'll wing it. Um, Grace, go ahead and do it. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah, where are we at, where? There, uh, it's here. Ignore that for now. So I'll hit play. Yeah. We'll let you touch, because you, you got this. <laughs> I, this should all be set. Okay. <laughs> do, I, do, I hit, do I hit start? It might be a when the start is counted or when the players are now. So, okay. so when all the players are in. Do I put this over here now so they can see it? Yeah. So when all the players are in, you start. Oh, okay. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. I gotcha. So here is the code. <coughs> I've never used Kahoot, that's why Jerry's helping me out. So if you go to kahoot.it and then you enter your game pin, hit enter. Hey, you've got somebody. <laughs> hey, Ruth Chesney, there we go. Naughty nicknames beware. That's nice. <laughs> oh wow, lots of players. Okay. Hope I put enough hard questions in there. Can I play? Is that fair? <laughs> no? Okay. People are still joining, so I'll keep waiting. The first question, you have two minutes to answer, just because I figure some people might be confused on how this is going to work. Um, and then the rest of them have 30 seconds. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit play when it gets to 100, if it gets to 100. Is there anyone still trying to get in? <laughs> okay. <coughs> I can wait until 
If you guys let me know you're trying to get in and can't yet, I don't want to catch you off. Are you having internet connections issues? Okay. We're going to hit burrito. Nice. Wow, that's a lot of people. Okay. Oh, someone dropped out. There we are. All right, I'm going to start. I don't know. Uh, Jerry, can someone join after it started? <coughs> okay. Well, we'll find out in a few seconds. So, okay. All right. I probably should have shrunk that image. All right. Joomla is a spoon from what projects? Do I have to? Here we go. So on your screens, you should see different shapes <coughs> and colors. And I believe you select the shape and color of the right answer. Another oh, sound. Or 20 seconds was probably too long <laughs> for the first one. I was, ex I was expecting people to still be trying to get into it at this point, <laughs> but that appears not to be the case. 112 answers. Great, that means people can still join in. I'm just going to fill 40 seconds of time. Um, after the quiz is done, uh, we're going to watch a video from last year's Joomla World Conference. A video, I don't recall who did it, but uh, it's essentially a music video with all the participants from last year. It's quite hilarious. I, m most of you have probably already seen it, but being the World Conference, it's fun to watch. Hope you guys all got that one right. <laughs> it was Mambo. <coughs> Those five people who said jelly bean, thank you. Good. Yeah. So, <laughs> next question. This one you only get 30 seconds. Which is probably still too, oh, that's nice. Oh, speed matters too. That helps out a lot. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess hit next again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Don't be fooled by this. Either Andy Miller or Johan said it yesterday, and they said it wrong. So, So the only other one that was real was the uh, one that got second place, best Linux or open source software. That's the one they started winning in 2003. So that was an award that Mambo won. Uh, but the one in 2005 at the Linux World Conference was best open source solution. All right. Next question. <coughs> In what country is Open Source Matters registered? <laughs> I 
I think 80 people will get this right. That's my guess. <laughs> oh, look at that. I should buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> All right. You guys all do that one? All right. <laughs> the top five keeps shifting. <laughs> Who remembers? job. Hey, let's kind of divide it up. Good. <laughs> this one is totally unfair to anybody from across the seas, but sorry. go, 2009. And it was in Pune, right? Yes? No? Yeah. I could be wrong with that one. Gotta jump. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is the question I made a point to uh, remember. Probably have maybe one question left. job. <laughs> oh, this is question eight of eight. This is the last question. So this is your last chance to get to the top. There we go. And the winner is? That is true. That is true. He did give me the Joomla Day India question. Therefore, who is, I'm not even going to try it. Somebody else try it. Ab, 
Abish Abishek. Abishek. Is it you? Oh, well, come on up here. <laughs> Very good. So, good job. I'll shake your hand. I thought you shouldn't know my name. I, I should, but I'm really. <laughs> so, John, we'll get your information. John, we'll get your information afterwards. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Oh, cool. Fine. Good. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Great. Well. All right, well, Jerry, thank you. That was a lot of fun. Jerry threw the idea at me yesterday. Hey, we should do a quiz afterwards. And uh, lessons learned, shorter times. Uh, I'm going to play a video, or do you want to do the video after your? So play a video. Uh, the video, if I could find it. Where are we at? I think it's here. Ah, here we are. <coughs> uh, got. Brian, I don't know how loud this is going to be. It's on mute. I, no, it, it's going to play sound, but it might just be really loud. I don't know. Oh, the headphone jack? Because the, <laughs> OK. Well, the, the Cahoots one was playing some sound. <laughs> there it is, right here. Got it. Good. And your, the video itself is on mute. Yes, so I did see that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> All right, here we go. And if you guys want to get up and dance during this, let's go for it. Time out. I think I have my lap. Nope, I don't. So. Might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Jumla's now here, you could take a break. I'm a hardware designer that could go to space. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Because I'm Jumla. Clap along if you feel Jumla's awesomeness.
Feel free to come over. Oops. There you go. You want to pick over here? Thank you so much, Ken. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes. Yeah.